Come rain, come sunshine Switch my heart and do you, you will find It's love for you All I got is love for you Oh yeah, yeah. There's no lie I will hold you it feels like a while since I sat here. I've had such a busy week. Such a busy week. And I can hear strange sounds in my headphones. Can you hear that? What's that? Can you hear that? <sighs> okay. You're welcome to the show. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe, hit that bell and share. Uh, a couple of announcements coming soon. I believe next week we'll give some uh, very interesting and exciting announcements for the show. Um, we are about to really start something big. So we are almost done doing some, doing most of the background work and whatnot. Again, you're welcome to the show if you're not subscribed. Please subscribe, hit that notification bell, and share. Yeah, today we are doing Bible Talks, Mondays of our political discussions. The show is available on YouTube every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 15 hours for now, Central African time. And uh, Mondays are for political discussions, Wednesdays are for rebuttals, and Fridays are for Bible Talks like today. So uh, if you want to catch the podcast, the podcast is available on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify, same days, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 15 hours, Central African time, for now. Yeah, so today we are discussing um, the doctrine of righteousness. You know, my earlier years as a believer, I have an interesting story in terms of my uh, my, my journey with the Lord. And, and as time goes by, I'll share with you... Um, what my journey with God has been. A couple of days ago, I was on a taxi. Again, every now and then I get on taxis. And I love having conversations with taxi drivers. Uh, I get to hear a lot of interesting stuff. I can still hear something in my headphones. Can you hear that? Yeah, there's like a really strange sound. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I, I was on a taxi. Um, uh, a couple of days ago, and we're, we're chatting with the with the driver, and he said, "You know, as we as we as we began chatting, the Lord opened my eyes, and so I began to see um, some of his dreams. So I told him, oh, recently you had a dream, uh, this and that and that, and I explained the meaning, and I understood why I had to get on that taxi that day because God had a message for this for this gentleman, and so." When I told him, um, he was uh, amazed and whatnot. But the interesting thing is that he said, wow, you have discernment. <laughs> this is relevant because of what I'm about to explain to you, the doctrine of righteousness. I learned this earlier on in my, uh, in my years uh, as, a, as a young believer. And this helped me overcome certain challenges. You see, one of the greatest challenges that many believers have in their walk with God in terms of getting close to God is they look at God as a schoolmaster who is observing their behavior. So they generally think of God as a parent that is constantly be, uh, observing behavior and giving you judgment based on what you do. And so it's very rare for you to find believers. Anyway, let me not say that, but it's common that you will find many believers out there who if you asked today, if Jesus came and appeared in the clouds, would you make it to heaven? A lot of them will be unsure. And that shouldn't be the case. The Bible in the book of Romans says, the spirit of God testifies with our spirits that we are children of God. So you should know without an explanation. You should just know that you know that you know that you're born again. And you should know that you'll make it to heaven. Okay, now there are things you can do that, uh, or rather, let me say, let me not say that. Can people go to hell? Yes, um, they can. But you should also understand how much security you have once you believe in Jesus. And when you have this security, you give room for the Holy Spirit to work in your life. Okay. Now, let me read you a scripture. I'll just share one scripture with you today and I'll keep this short. Uh, the show, as you know, it is about to change. 
So treasure these uh, segments that we have given you so far. I'll, I'll read you one scripture and I'll explain. Hebrews 13, uh, wow. Hebrews 5 verse 13 to 14. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of age, of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now, this scripture, Hebrews 5, verse 13 to 14, tells us that uh, those that partake of milk only are babies spiritually. They have not matured and they do not understand the word. Some virgins say the doctrine of righteousness. And it further goes on to say, but strong meat is for those that are mature, those that are of age, solid food is for those that are of age, who by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern. So one of the greatest signs uh, of a mature believer is uh, discernment. If you can discern, then you are getting into uh, the realms of maturity, because only then can you really begin to partake of uh, spiritual meat. Now, the book of Peter says, as newborn babies desire the milk of the word that you may grow, that you may grow thereby. The reason is because from Jesus' language, you, under, you understand this. He says, unless a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Unless a man be born of the water and the spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God, right? So being born again, it, it implies, it's already implied in the statement, born again, that you are a baby. So now, not a baby in the sense that we think of. <laughs> Many believers uh, think that when you're born again, your spirit is literally a baby. No, not really. Your, your spirit is not a baby. God has supplanted your spirit. It means he's given you a brand new spirit. But the thing is that your spirit is a foreigner. It has just arrived. When you become born again, your spirit has just arrived. But is your spirit blank? No, it came from God. How can a part of God lack knowledge? The issue is that your soul lacks the knowledge of God, but your spirit knows God. The Bible says that you are seated in heaven, in heavenly places with Christ. You're hidden in God with Christ in heavenly places. Now, if you're seated in heavenly places, it means you are in the realm that God is in. You are where God is. So your spirit is in contact with God. When you pray, it's your spirit that is in contact with God. Now, the issue is that when you're, the reason you, the Bible refers to your spirit as a baby is because your spirit needs to now grow to the place of influencing your soul. Your spirit needs to grow from the weak point because your spirit is not strong enough to influence your soul above your body because you are, I mean, you've lived in your body your whole life. You have given heed to all your bodily desires. Whenever you felt hungry, you ate very few of you have ever had a night where you went to bed hungry. If you did, then you just didn't have food. But not out of desire, out of will, out of putting your body under subjection. You know, that's the whole point of fasting. Fasting is not so that God gets draws closer to you. No. Fasting, as a matter of fact, the Bible says, when Jesus' disciples were questioned for not fasting, he said, why do they need to fast when I am here? The issue is that they didn't fast for him to come, okay? Emmanuel, God with us. But when he came, they didn't have to fast. So the issue is that because God is not here in the sense of physically, but he is here spiritually, in order to be in tune with him, we need to put our body under subjection so the spirit man can have a greater influence over the soul. Uh, again, I'll refer you back to spirit, soul, and body so you can have a better understanding. Now, most people uh, do not understand this, that in order for your spirit to adapt, or rather your spirit to influence your soul more than your body, you need to feed your spirit so it can grow, it can grow strong on the word of God, right? So when you're feeding your spirit, what you're also doing is that you're changing the state of your mind, you're changing your soul. The more you put in, I talked about it last time, that the soul is like a bank. What you deposit is what comes out. So now 
when you deposit something that aligns more with your body, you cause your soul to be subject to your body. It means when you feel something, uh, or, or rather when you think something, your body responds. When you see food, your body responds and you can't resist. You have to eat. Have you ever met those people that just can't watch you eating? They have to eat anything you're eating. Have you ever met those people? Anything you're eating, they have to partake. They can't watch you eat. It's because when their eyes behold the food and their mind comprehends it, the body responds. Now, the same applies spiritually. If you feed your soul with information that is spiritual, that is more like your spirit, then your soul becomes subject to your spirit. It means you'll be more sensitive to when your spirit tells you, let's pray. You'll be more sensitive when your spirit tells you, I think we need to fast. You'll be more sensitive when your spirit receives, receives a message from God because God doesn't talk to your body or your soul. He talks to your spirit and your spirit communicates it to your soul. So the issue is you need to take care of your soul. So, you know, when you talk about things like listening to secular music or watching this or doing that, it's not really about it being a scene and it will take you to hell. It's about it filling your soul. So what your soul is filled with determines where you lean. And the problem is that when you lean towards your body, you get further from God. And the further you get from God, you die spiritually. And that eventually will lead you to hell. <laughs> All right. So as uh, newborn babies desire the milk of the word that you may grow thereby, and it further says uh, spiritual milk is for those who are babies and uh, solid food is for those who are mature, who by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern both good and evil. Now, the important thing for you to understand in order to uh, get close to God is where you stand the doctrine of righteousness. What exactly does God think about you? What God, when God sees you, what is, what is his feeling in his heart? What does he think? What does he feel about you? That's a very important thing for you to understand because if you understand that, then it will help you in how you relate to God. Uh, God is constant. We are changing. So the person, the one that needs to make the more effort into meeting the other is the changing one because we're inconsistent. Because we are inconsistent, we need to conform into God's consistency. And God has given us one thing to help us with that. It's called righteousness. The Bible says God made him who had no sin to become sin so that we might become his righteousness. I'm paraphrasing. That's in the book of Corinthians. So are you a sinner if you've believed in Jesus? No, you're not. The Bible has never referred to us as sinners. The Bible did say all have sinned, but it does say we are all sinners. Now, sinners are those who have not believed in Jesus. Yeah, those are sinners. They are of their father, the devil. But those that have believed in Jesus are not sinners. God exchanged Jesus' righteousness for our sin. So Jesus became sin on the cross that we might become righteous. What this means is that when God looks at you from the time that Jesus died and rose again, Till today, when God looks at you, if you believe in Jesus, then all he sees is Jesus. All he sees is the righteousness of Jesus. Yeah, I know it may be hard for you to believe. That's why the Bible is called, that's why the, 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 the gospel is it called the gospel. It's called the good news. Uh, when you read it from the Greek, it's eugelion, nearly too good to be true. That's what it means, literally the gospel. So if it's hard for you to believe, then it's a gospel <laughs> because God doesn't look at you based on your sin. He looks at you based on the righteousness of Jesus. The only thing you need to do is believe in Jesus. So there are people that are self-righteous that consider themselves above the rest because they don't do certain things. That's because they have put their trust in their ability to not do those things. The Bible in the book of Jude says, unto him who is able to keep us from falling, only God is able to keep you from falling. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, he that thinks he stands, let him take heed lest he falls. It is not in your own power to keep yourself. You can't do anything to please God. You can't. It is impossible to please God without faith. You can't. There's nothing you can do. All you have to do is have faith in Jesus. Then you will please God. It is impossible to please God without faith. So do not be judged over the righteousness of others. 
Because even you yourself cannot stand on your own. Now, in light of this, uh, a lot of believers have hindered themselves from God because they consider themselves sinful and they always look at things through the lens of what they did and what they said and what they thought. As a matter of fact, when you get into a place of prayer, one of the things that the enemy will try to do is to feed your mind with uh, bad thoughts about things you've seen, things you've done. You, you, you understand? That's why you need to keep your soul healthy. When you keep your soul healthy, you read the enemy of weapons to use to make you feel guilty before God. You read him of that when you keep your soul healthy. That's the whole essence of avoiding certain uh, worldly things, okay? And uh, this is a part one. This is an introduction to the subject. I'll come back to really explain the doctrine of righteousness. But one thing you also need to understand is that discernment is not a matter of logic. Discernment is not a matter of logic. <laughs> When you are trying to judge someone on the basis of the fruits they produce, it's a whole different thing from discernment. Discernment is not because you have observed and therefore you're making a judgment. Discernment is a spiritual thing that comes through the exercise of your spiritual senses. Your body has senses. Scientists tell us that there are five. Touch, smell, sight, taste, and what else? What else? Ah, I can't remember the fifth one. But your spirit also has senses. The senses of your spirit are different. The senses of your spirit are different from those of your body. Now, when you exercise the senses of your spirit, you learn to discern. And that's a sign of spiritual maturity. Because now you don't need to start observing what is he teaching uh, is he right? Let's see. What is he teaching? All you need to do is turn on your spirit and discern. You have the Holy Spirit. Why is it so hard for you to discern? Anyway, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell and share. Uh, we're coming back next week with the Monday show. I hope you guys are looking forward to that. Uh, again, we have announcements uh, for the show next week. And good to see you. Bye-bye. Hey, like what you see? I know you do. Hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao.